In this video, we will show you how to assemble the Senko XP Fit Uni SC connector onto a flat 1.6 by 2 mm cable. You will start by confirming that you have everything you need to perform this termination. This includes cable cutters, cable strippers, an XP Fit cut guide spacer, an assembly guide jig, your Senko XP Fit Uni SC connector, which comes with a back post and screw cap, and in this case, it's green indicating APC. Blue would indicate UPC. And you will need a precision cleave tool. To begin, measure 55 millimeters from the end of the cable and mark it. Then, insert the screw cap onto the cable with the threads facing the termination end of the cable. Now, Strip the 55 millimeters of cable jacket previously marked by using the cable cutters to split the members apart at the end of the cable. Proceed to split the rest of the 55 millimeters by hand and be careful not to bend the fiber too much if it is stuck to one of the members as shown. Now, fold the two members backwards 180 degrees until the members are almost touching themselves. Cut the members off, leaving just 5 millimeters of the member bent backwards. You can then slide the back post onto the beginning of the cable jacket such that the members are coming through the gaps between the tabs on the back post. At this point, you need to install the screw cap onto the back post by tucking the strength members into the screw cap and screwing it onto the threads of the back post until you feel a positive stop. You may need to tuck the strength members into the screw cap before sliding the back post onto the cable. This step can be somewhat cumbersome, so take your time and be careful. The next steps are to prepare the fiber for cleaving. You need to insert your back post assembly into the cut guide spacer. This cut spacer helps you determine the amount of 250 micron coating you need to strip from the fiber, and it helps keep the fiber at exactly the right length. It is recommended to leave the cable assembly in the cut spacer as you strip the coating from the fiber. Here, you can see we are very carefully stripping the coating from the tip of the cut spacer to the end of the fiber. Now, Remove the assembly from the cut spacer to test its integrity by screening the fiber. To do this, you must sweep the fiber to about 30 degrees in all four directions. Then, thoroughly clean it with an IPA dampened lint-free wipe and insert the assembly back into the cut spacer. Now you are ready to cleave the bare fiber. Make sure there is no gap around the cut spacer and the fiber is straight. Sometimes you may need to flip your cable or reposition it so that you end up with the cleanest and straightest possible cleave. Grab your cleaver and get ready to cleave the fiber. To do this, you must open the cleaver and check to see that your cleave bar is in the pre-cleave position towards you. Insert the cut spacer with no gaps. Close the lid of the cleaver and slide the cleave bar, which will cleanly cut the fiber. Always carefully dispose of your bare fiber, and now you no longer need the assembly in the cut spacer so you can remove it. Finally, the last step is to insert your bare fiber assembly into the connector. Grab your guide jig and your connector and insert the connector into the guide jig from the top, making sure it is installed all the way forward where the beginning of the arrow is indicated on the guide jig with no gaps. At this point, always check your fiber length by laying it on the beginning of the guide jig as shown. There are lines on the guide jig that indicate where each length should be stripped and cleaved to. To insert the bare fiber assembly in the connector, you must carefully insert the tip of the fiber in the conical hole in the connector and put the back post down in the corners of the guide jig where it is meant to sit. Then, slowly slide the cable forward until the back post reaches the small white clips that latch onto the sides of it and you hear a click. If there is any large bowing in the fiber before this point, stop, remove the fiber, and try again. However, when the assembly clicks into place, there should be a slight bow in the fiber. This is a good thing. You can then close the connector cover, making sure to secure it properly with two click sounds. And now it is safe to remove the connector wedge, which locks the fiber into place. 
remove the connector from the guide jig, and you are done terminating. You can check the connector for proper termination with an XP Fit test kit, which includes a visual fault locator, also known as a VFL, an SC to SC adapter, which has a cutout to show the windows properly, a 3dB attenuator, and a launch cable. In this case, our launch cable is SC UPC to SC APC because we have terminated an APC connector. If you have terminated a UPC connector, then you will need an SC UPC to SC UPC launch cable. First, plug the attenuator into the VFL. Then, plug the UPC end of the launch cable into that attenuator. Now, plug the other end of the launch cable into the SC to SC adapter. And now you can plug the terminated end into that adapter to make sure there is no light coming out of the windows of the connector. If excessive light is coming out of either window, then it is an incomplete termination and you must repeat it. If no light is showing, you've successfully completed your termination and you are ready to connect. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button, comment your thoughts, and subscribe for more Senko Fiber Optic content.